you for stopping by. It's great to see you on this first Sunday in the new year. I hope your celebrations have been safe and good and meaningful. And I hope that as we worship together, you will feel God's presence in your life leading you into this new year. My name's Ron Schultz. I'm the interim minister at Union, the church at Chelsea Park. We're a United Methodist congregation in Chelsea, Alabama, and we're glad to have you worship with us today. God, I pray your blessings on us as we gather in your name. Unite us together as a congregation of your people. Open our hearts, our minds, and our ears that we might hear your word for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture this morning comes from John's gospel, the first chapter, beginning with the first verse, and I'll be reading from the Common English Bible. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the word was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. A man named John was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light so that through him everyone would believe in the light. He himself wasn't the light, but his mission was to testify concerning the light. The true light that shines on all people was coming into the world. The light was in the world, and the world came into being through the light. But the world didn't recognize the light. The light came to his own people, and his own people didn't welcome him. But those who did welcome him those who believed in his name, he authorized to become God's children. Born not from blood, nor from human desire or passion, but born from God, the word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory, glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified about him, crying out, This is the one of whom I said, He who comes after me is greater than me, because he existed before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. As the law was given through Moses, so grace and truth came into being through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. God, the only Son, who has at the Father's side, has made him known. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Happy New Year. I mean that. Happy New Year. Around here, people celebrate with all sorts of traditions as we celebrate the new year. There are always lots of fireworks, lots of good food, lots of libations. New Year's Day, uh, people around here uh, eat black-eyed peas and greens. If you ask around, some folks will say, well, I don't know why we eat them. We just always do. Others will say, well, those, those foods, black-eyed peas and greens, uh, bring us good luck, and Lord knows we need good luck going into this new year. Black-eyed peas and greens are considered to be humility food, food of the ground, food of the earth, inexpensive, easy to find, humility food. Some folks also eat pork. Pork also brings good luck. 
A pig, they say, buries its snout in the ground and moves forward, rooting as it eats. And so eating pork going into the new year symbolizes our moving forward into the new year. Nobody wants to move backwards. They tell us to avoid eating chicken or turkey because chickens and turkeys scratch backwards for their food and you don't want to spend your year scratching. They also say avoid eating beef on New Year's Day because beef eat their food standing still and you don't want to stand still this year. You want to move forward. So if you believe in luck or if you just enjoy black-eyed peas and greens and pork, this is your opportunity to enjoy those things. And what I would say is this. If you're fortunate enough in this time, in this world, to have some money and able to buy some food, any kind of food, Eat it, share it, enjoy it, and consider yourself blessed. Down deep, all of us hope that this coming new year will be just that, new. In this past year, we've all made mistakes. There are things that we wish we could go back and do over again differently. There are things we wish we could avoid altogether. We've come to some dead ends this year, and we've experienced some disappointments this year. And deep inside, we each of us long for a new year. But new is not easy. We carry our old habits into the new year. We resolve at the beginning that we're going to be different and we're going to uh, act different. But before long, we find ourselves right back in the same old habits, doing the same old things, and getting the same old results. And so we need an encouraging word. We need some good news. And John's Gospel provides just what we need. John sings a beautiful song as he opens his gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not anything came into being. Does that sound familiar to you? It sounds just like it came out of Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning when God began creating the heavens and the earth. You see, John is claiming that the advent of Jesus is Genesis 1 all over again. In Jesus, God is once again creating a new heaven and a new earth. God creates through nothing but a word. God says the word light, and there is light. God says dry land, water, animals. And now there's something where before there was nothing but formless void and darkness. God didn't stop creating in Genesis. Creation continues according to John. On a cloudless night, God called Abram, a nomadic desert sheik. Abram, come outside. And Abram comes out of his tent and walks out into the darkness with God. And God says, look up at the sky. Can you count all those stars? And Abram says, no, Lord, there are too many to count. And God says, that's how it's going to be for you and your wife, Sarah. You're going to have more 
babies and descendants than you can count. In fact, all of your descendants are going to become uh, a great nation. And Abram told that news to Sarah. And she laughed. The world considered this old couple to be barren. They thought of themselves as old and as good as dead. God promised Abram that his descendants would be as numerous as the stars and would produce a nation that would be a blessing to all nations. And all this would be done on the basis of nothing more than a promise. Nothing more than words. That's the way God works. God never stops speaking. And God never stops creating. That promised nation of people, you will remember, was in fact born. And they found themselves eventually as slaves in Egypt under the brutal heel of Pharaoh and the most powerful empire in the world. And Moses was hiding out in Midian, watching over his shoulder because he had murdered a man back in Egypt. And now he ran to Midian to hide out amongst his father-in-law and his kinspeople. And he's not only watching over his shoulder, he's watching over the flocks of his father-in-law. And one day, while he's watching those sheep, Moses sees a bush catch on fire, but it's not burned up. And Moses hears a voice, God's voice, speaking out of that bush. I am the Lord your God. Now you go to Pharaoh and speak. You go to Pharaoh and say, God says, let my people go. <laughs> is that all? God is going to free the Hebrew people on the basis of nothing but a word. And a word that comes out of this uh, not too talented untrained speaker slash running for his safety murderer named Moses. God's going to free a nation of people by speaking a word through Moses. Is that it? Yeah. That's the way this God works, creating something out of nothing, a people of, out of nobodies. God frees women and men out of slaves. God keeps creating new worlds, opening doors, creating new possibilities. Three chapters later in John's Gospel, chapter 3, a man named Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night. Nicodemus is well-educated. Nicodemus is a respected leader in town. But he can't figure out Jesus. Jesus tells Nicodemus that he must be born from above. And old Nicodemus can't figure out how a grown man could possibly be born from above or from anywhere else for that matter. Jesus tells Nicodemus that the wind blows where it will. Did you hear that? The wind blows where it will, Nicodemus. Do you get it? Once again, John's gospel moves from the story of Jesus Christ back to the story of creation in Genesis 1. When the world was created, you remember in Genesis 1, it said the spirit or the wind of God. It's the same word in both places. The spirit of God, the wind of God, hovered over the waters, swept through the chaos and the darkness and brought something out of nothing, gave new life out of 
confusion. A new world was born. In other words, Jesus reminds Nicodemus that it's the nature of God to create and to keep creating and to giving birth to new things. Jesus is saying, Nicodemus, you may have celebrated a lot of birthdays, but here's a promise of new birth, new life, a whole new world coming from God. Here at the beginning of this new year, here as we walk into 2021, I don't know what new birth, what new life, or new world waits for us. And I don't know what new birth, new life, or new world you might need. Maybe, maybe you're in a situation where your world has fallen apart. Maybe things are confusing and frightening and dark for you. If that's where you're living right now, I do know this. The God who first spoke a word and a world sprang into being. The God who comes to us as the word and dwells among us. The God who began the story of Jesus. This God continues to create. This is your beginning, and that's good news. Join me as we affirm our faith in a God who continues to create a new beginning every day. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Holy Communion is a means of grace. When we share the bread and the wine, God uses that to touch us and work inside us and create something new. And so as we go into this new year, I pray that you will experience God working in your life because God has poured out grace upon grace freely in great abundance, even on you and even on me. And though we never earned it and don't deserve it, in Christ Jesus, we're made new through his blood. All of our sins crumble away. And the bread and wine are reminders that in Christ we are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now join me as we pray together the prayer Jesus taught the church to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for your faithful stewardship. Thank you for making sure your offering 
uh, arrives in the offering plate in the sanctuary uh, or for mailing in your offering or going through the giving portal uh, whose address as you see appearing on the screen. Your faithful stewardship is a symbol of God's grace continuing to work in your life and create new things and through your life creating new things in the world around us. And so, dear God, as we remember the gifts and tithes and offerings given in love, we pray your blessings on the gift and the giver and the new things you will create in the new year. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Through God's ongoing creation, the Word has become flesh and dwelt among us. May Christ's light shine in the darkest corner of your life. And may Christ's love shine through all of us into the darkest corners of the world. This is the beginning. And God is with us as we go into something new. In the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit, amen.